I hate news unless it's ground news, the sponsor of this video. There comes a point in every child, woman and man's life where they wonder, does light experience time? For a long time, I thought the answer was no. And it's so intriguing to think about what it means for something to not experience time, isn't it? But Einstein comes and says that's wrong. Not just wrong, but very wrong. So in this video, we're gonna see first of all, where that question even come from? Why did we even have that question whether light experiences time or not? And secondly, we'll see what physics really has to say about it. But there's also a bonus. By the end of the video, you'll also be able to answer another question that we might, you might have wondered upon. What is the speed of light with respect to light? So if you're ready for this, let's dive in. So let's start with why do we even have this question in the first place, whether light experiences time or not? This all stems from what Einstein says about time. According to him, moving clocks take slower compared to the stationary ones. And we've seen where this comes from before, but since this is such a central idea to this particular video, let's quickly recap. So for this, we go back to our photon clock. A photon clock is where a photon ping pongs between two mirrors like this. And you can imagine every time it hits the top mirror, there's a tick. But what if the card is moving? Well, let's say the card is moving to the right. What will we see? Well, this is what we will see now. I have the stationary card over here as a reference. You can see in both cases, the photon is traveling the same distance in same time. Speed of light is the same in every single reference frame, whether the cart is moving or a cart is at rest, doesn't matter who looks at it. But over here, when the cart was stationary, all that velocity was upwards. But since the cart over here is moving, to keep up with the cart, the velocity has become diagonal. So part of that velocity is used to go forward and only a small part of that velocity is used to go up. And as a result, its vertical velocity reduces. And that's why it'll take now longer time for it to, you know, it to, to tick. And therefore this clock ticks slower compared to this clock, as you can see. And what if the cart moves even faster? Well, the situation becomes even more dramatic. You can see now it takes even more time for the photon to tick over here, which means the clock slows down even more. Ultimately, what if the cart is now moving at the speed of light, hypothetically? Well, I have made the cart glow so as to show that it's moving at the speed of light. Now look, to catch up, because the cart is moving at the speed of light, it is using all its velocity in the horizontal direction. It has no velocity. It cannot move in the vertical direction itself. Therefore, regardless of how long I'll wait, I will not see that photon tick at all. <laughs> it makes sense, right? All of its velocity is used up in the horizontal direction. It has no velocity in the vertical direction. And as a result of that, look, look, it's not ticking at all. This is the reason why I thought that the photons should not experience any time because their clocks will not tick at all. So Einstein, what is wrong in my logic? Well, Einstein says the problem is, Mahesh, you're being biased over here. Deep down, you want light to not experience time so badly because it's such a cool story to share and blow people's minds away that you're not thinking critically. And suddenly Feynman jumps from nowhere. Where you, Feynman, where did you come from? <laughs> and Feynman says, Mahesh, remember, the first principle is to not fool yourself and you are very easy to fool. All right, all right, I know I can be easily fooled, not just with the physics of special relativity, but with any piece of information, like say news or media. Now, we don't have Einstein or Feynman all the time, but what we do have is Ground News, the sponsor of this video. Ground News was co-founded by a former NASA engineer, Harleen Kaur. This website and an app, this is also on the mobile phone, of course, gives you a lot of tools to overcome biases, think critically and arrive at informed conclusions. Unlike what I'm doing here with light. For example, I follow their science page and I came across this story where the complete library of Charles Darwin is apparently revealed. So how does Ground News help? First of all, we see 25 sources covering the same news from different perspectives across the political spectrum. But what's more interesting is that each article has a faculty score that shows how credible that is. But who gives it that faculty score, you ask? Well, it turns out that it is assessed by three independent news monitoring organizations, which means I don't have to go through all the sources. I just filter out the articles with high faculty ratings and look, now I have multiple highly credible sources of the same information all in one place. 
And of course, now I can read all these articles completely and arrive at an informed conclusion. In short, the Ground News branded subscription that I have allows me to think critically and fight against bias reporting, pseudosciences and whatnot. And looking at the world around, I think it's the need of the hour. So if you want to subscribe, then just go to ground.news slash floathead and get 30% off unlimited access on branded subscription. The link is also in the description. Now, back to the video. So Einstein, what's the problem by looking at this and saying that light should not be experiencing any time or photons should not experience any time? That seems like a perfectly logical conclusion for me. Einstein says, I'm using very loose words over here, like experience or perspective. So let's get very concrete. Looking, or looking from someone's perspective basically means in physics, looking from their reference frames. And I'm like, yeah, that's, that makes sense. Which in turn means a frame where that object is at rest. Yes, that makes sense. Where their velocity is zero. Yes, Einstein, I'm familiar with the concept of being at rest. I said now ask Mahesh, do you not see the problem of looking at things from light's perspective? Like, no, what's the problem? I said this Mahesh, looking from light's perspective means looking from light's reference frames. And I'm like, okay, what's the problem in that? Well, now we need a frame where light is at rest, which means a frame in which the speed of light is zero. Okay, what's the problem? Einstein says, Mahesh, remember what my second postulate is? Well, let's see, what are Einstein's postulate? The second postulate says the speed of light in vacuum is a constant in all inertial frames. Whoa, 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 wait a second, Einstein, okay. What does this mean? So Einstein reminds us that the whole special relativity is built on the postulate that the speed of light is C. The value is the same in vacuum, by the way, is the same in all reference frames. In other words, there is no reference frame in which the speed of light is anything other than C. Therefore, there cannot be any frame in which light is at rest. Therefore, there cannot be any light's reference frame. And therefore, in special relativity, you cannot look at things from light's perspective. That makes no sense. Oh my God, that, that makes sense, folks. I mean, so what's Einstein, Einstein's point over here is that in special relativity, there is no light's reference frame. So what is the accurate answer to this question? Does light experience time? The answer is not yes or no. The answer is that question is meaningless because there is no light's perspective. There is no light's reference frame. And so that question makes no sense whatsoever. I'm, I'm a little dissatisfied with that answer, um, but we're not gonna give up. Come on, I have at least a couple of counterattacks with me. The first one would be, Einstein, this just looks like a nuance. I mean, think of my question as a thought experiment. That's what you're famous for, right? That's what led you to special relativity in the first place. So what if we hypothetically assume that there was a frame in which light is at rest? Then, would it be a valid question to ask in that frame or from that frame, what would light experience, would it experience time or not? And Einstein says, no, <laughs> because by making that assumption that there exists a frame in which light can be at rest, a light's reference frame exists, by making that assumption, we're destroying the postulate, the central postulate on which special relativity hinges. Feel free to do that, but then don't use the results of special relativity. In other words, if you say that there is a frame in which light is at rest, then don't use special relativity. You can't use the results derived from special relativity, which means you can't use time dilation anymore because time dilation, time dilation is derived by assuming that the speed of light is the same in all reference frames, right? So you can't use that. So that means if, if you are considering a frame in which light is at rest, then special relativity is no longer valid. Now anything can happen. <laughs> so in this, this, you have to now come up with a completely new model, which will have its own rules. I don't know what that rule is, but you need to figure that out and then try to argue what happens. Don't use special relativity. I think that's fair folks. I mean, it's kind of like looking at a chess game and asking what if two kings were next to each other? Any chess player will tell you that that just can't be true. You, you can't have two kings ever coming next to each other in, a, in any standard game of chess. But what if I asked like, Hypothetically, hypothetically, what if that happened? Well, now the only way that can happen is if you have completely different rules of chess and you need to figure out what those rules of chess are and then based on those rules, something will happen, right? That's kind of like what we're doing over here, says Einstein. 
And I agree, that makes sense. But don't worry, I have a second counterattack, much more solid, much more concrete counterattack. If we can't consider a light reference frame, let's consider a reference frame that is going very close to the speed of light. Now the mathematicians in the house are gonna start having teary eyes because Einstein, what if you consider a reference frame whose velocity approaches C? For example, imagine that card is now going extremely fast, almost at the speed of light, not quite, not quite, so don't get angry at me, Einstein, almost at the speed of light. Now look at its photon clock. It's almost frozen, isn't it? Almost, it is ticking, I mean, it is slowly moving, but it's almost frozen. Which means I am completely accurate in saying that an object traveling almost, almost Einstein, don't shout at me, almost at the speed of light, experiences almost no time. Isn't that a perfectly valid statement? And Einstein says, Mahesh, well, no. What? No, says Einstein. Einstein reminds us, again, if you want to look about look at what that card is experiencing, you need to jump into its reference frame. And when you jump into ref its reference frame, that card is at rest. <laughs> it will see the photons bouncing normally. It will see its frame passing properly for itself. One second per second. So regardless of which object you consider, regardless of how fast that object is going, how close to the speed of light it is going, even if its velocity is approaching the speed of light, remember, if you wanna consider what that object experiences, you need to jump into its reference frame. And when you jump into its reference frame, it's at rest, motion is relative, remember? And because it's at rest, it'll see its clock ticking normally. It'll see its clock ticking properly. Therefore, the correct statement would be an object traveling almost at the speed of light, or any object for that matter, experiences proper time, normal time, one second per second. Nobody will experience anything slowing down. Every single object will experience proper time. By the way, proper time is actually a term used in special relativity, that's why I use it as well. It basically is a time that you measure from the rest frame. So any object will always experience, because experiences are always measured from the rest frame, always experience proper time. So putting it all together, if tomorrow somebody comes to you and asks you, does light experience time and tries to blow your mind away, you know what to say. Well, first of all, you say that question is meaningless. Why? Because light's reference frame does not exist. Einstein's postulate. And if they say, hey, what, 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 let's do a thought experiment. What if hypothetically, you say, no, 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 that's breaking special relativity. Once you break special relativity, you can't use the results of special relativity. And then feel free to listen to them, but if they use any time dilation equation or anything from special relativity, say that, ah, you can't do that because you've broken special relativity. You need to come up with your new model completely. And, and if they try to say, okay, what if we close, if we go very close to the speed of light, now the time appears almost frozen, they say that's great, but if you wanna understand what their experience is, you need to jump into their frame, from their frame, they're always at rest, they will always measure proper time, normal time, just like how you and I experience. So, does light experience time? The answer is, that question makes no sense. And now, on to the bonus question, what is the speed of light with respect to light? What if they're going in the same direction? What if they're going in the opposite direction? What is the answer, folks? Come on, you can say it now. You can say it with all your heart. The answer is, that question is meaningless. <laughs> because light's reference frame does not exist. And again, if you consider, well, you know, what is the speed of light with respect to an object that is traveling almost at the speed of light, then again, the speed of light will always be the same. Einstein's postulate just answers you for that. And that kind of sort of explains why you cannot have a light reference frame. Because regardless of how fast you're traveling, how close you're traveling to the speed of light, from your perspective, light will always move away from you at the speed of C, at the, sp at the speed of light. And therefore you will never be able to catch up to light. Again, I'm, I'm talking about in vacuum, okay? We're sticking to vacuum. So you can never catch up to light. Since you can never ever catch up to light because regardless of what you do, light will always go away from you at the speed of light. You can never ever come into its reference frame. And remember, this is not a technological limitation, by the way, folks. I'm not talking that technologically we're limited. I'm saying as long as you consider special relativity, if special relativity is valid and it's accurate within the realm of special relativity, light reference frame is completely invalid. So any question that you hear which talks about light reference frame with respect to light, perspective of light, light experience, anything that has this, you now know how to answer. That question would be meaningless, that statement will be meaningless, completely meaningless. I'll see you, bye-bye.